A mega earthquake in the USA, the San Andreas Fault is showing signs of awakening and that could mean that a huge disaster is imminent. Oh shit. Here we go again. We'll take a look at what's brewing underground and what it means for the millions of people living near the time bomb. So stay tuned until the end. This could shake your world. Welcome, friends. If the earth is shaking somewhere, you will always be the first to know here on the channel. So why not leave a subscription right now? It's free, you'll never miss a video again, and you'll help me to reach my goal of 100,000 subscribers. Thanks friends. The San Andreas Fault is not just any fault line in the earth's crust. It is the fault par excellence, the star among tectonic boundaries, if you will. It runs for over 300 kilometers through California and separates the North American from the Pacific plate. Imagine it as a gigantic zipper running right through the Golden State. Except that this zipper sometimes jerks violently with devastating consequences. I hope your zippers never jerk with devastating consequences. The history of the San Andreas Fault reads like a disaster novel. In 1906, it reduced San Francisco to rubble. In 1857, it devastated Southern California. Since then, it has been relatively quiet, at least as far as the really big quakes are concerned. But geologists know that this is the calm before the storm, or rather before the next big rumble, because now comes the clincher. There is a section of this fault that behaves like a Swiss watch. Near the small town of Parkfield in the middle of California, the earth quakes about every 22 years. The last quake there was in 2004. Mathematically inclined viewers will know that the next one should be just around the corner. But why is this section of the Parkfield Fault so special? Imagine the San Andreas Fault as a giant rubber band. In the north of Parkfield, this band is continuously moving forward at a rate of about 3 meters per year. In the south, it is stuck. And Parkfield is exactly the transition zone between these two areas. It's like the breaking point in an experiment, and we can watch the tension build up live. Researchers use this geological laboratory to learn more about earthquakes, because that's the big problem. Even with the most modern seismology technology, we still can't predict earthquakes with great reliability, but maybe that's about to change. A new study has discovered something fascinating. Dr. Luca Malagnini and his team have been looking at the seismic waves that travel through the rock beneath Parkfield. More precisely, how these waves lose energy on their way through the ground. Experts call this attenuation, and lo and behold, just before the earthquake in 2004, the attenuation behavior changed in a very characteristic way. Now it's getting a bit technical, but don't worry, I'll explain. The researchers observed that about six weeks before the earthquake, the attenuation of high frequency waves decreased, while that of low frequency waves increased. It was as if the rocks were whispering to each other, watch out, it's gonna crash soon. And now comes the big surprise. The scientists are now seeing exactly the same pattern again. It's as if the earth under Parkfield is starting to hum like a kettle just before it whistles. The tension is building up, the rocks are changing, and at some point this energy has to be released. But what does that mean in concrete terms? The researchers assume that we are on the verge of the next Parkfield earthquake, which will probably have a magnitude of around 6 on the Richter scale. Not a doomsday scenario, but definitely strong enough to cause a lot of damage. Now you might be asking yourself, what does this have to do with the rest of the San Andreas Fault? Well, Parkfield is like the canary in the coal mine. What happens here could be a harbinger of larger events because the entire fault is under enormous tension. Experts estimate that there is a 75% chance that a truly devastating earthquake with a magnitude of seven or more will shake the region in the next 30 years. Now, I've already heard some of you say, whether it's magnitude six or seven, it's not gonna make any difference, dude. Oh yes, it will. The seismic energy of magnitude six on the moment magnitude scale is equivalent to 15,000 tons of TNT. The seismic energy of magnitude seven is equivalent to 475,000 tons of TNT. That's the explosive force of 38 Hiroshima atomic bombs. So a magnitude seven would really be a big one, a truly destructive quake. It could turn cities like Los Angeles or San Francisco into piles of rubble, make millions of people homeless, and turn the economy of California and neighboring states upside down. No wonder geologists are watching the San Andreas Fault like a hawk. But there is another factor that makes things a little more complicated. Renewable energy, that's right. There are several geothermal power plants near the fault at the Salton Sea. They tap into the heat from the Earth's interior and convert it into electricity, a great thing for cheap electricity, but possibly a problem for seismic stability. To get the heat out of the ground, water is pumped into the ground and then back out again. This changes the pressure in the rock. And that could, at least in theory, trigger earthquakes or increase existing tensions. It's like fiddling with a rubber band that's been stretched too far. Maybe nothing will happen, or it could snap back at you. 
Zaphon, what do you think? I think... <laughs> The debate is in full swing. Some researchers see a clear link between geothermal energy extraction and increased seismic activity, while others are a little more cautious and are calling for more research to be carried out first. But one thing is clear, the risks and benefits should be carefully weighed up, because the worst case scenario would be pretty ugly. But let's get back to Parkfield and the possible upcoming quakes. What does this actually mean for the people there? Parkfield itself is tiny, with only about two dozen people living there, but the insights we gain here could save lives lives throughout California, because if we learn to recognize the precursors of earthquakes, we might be able to develop even better early warning systems in the future. Imagine you are on vacation in Los Angeles and enjoying a trip to Hollywood, and suddenly your cell phone beeps, earthquake in 30 seconds, it says. That doesn't sound like much time, but it could be enough to seek shelter, turn off the gas, or stop a moving car. And in the event of a really big quake, such warnings could save thousands of lives. We're not there yet, but the research in Parkfield is bringing us closer to that goal step by step. Every earthquake we observe there, every seismic wave we analyze, is like another piece of the puzzle in our understanding of this powerful natural force. I would be interested in your opinion on the subject of geothermal energy and earthquake hazards. How do you weigh up the pros and cons? Is the advantage of cheap electricity preferable, or are the risks so great that it is better to leave it alone? By the way, you can count on it. As soon as something happens in Parkfield, you'll be the first to know here on the channel. So if you don't want to miss an update, press the subscribe button and activate the bell. It may not only rumble on Earth, but also in space. A stellar explosion will most likely be visible from Earth in a few days. We will soon be able to see a nova explosion with the naked eye. If you don't want to miss it and want to know when and where to look, be sure to click on the video displayed at the top right. And if you want to support the channel, feel free to check out the older videos where you will find many exciting and crazy topics. Otherwise, I'd say see you in the next video. Take care, friends.